give you all the love. scripture but the coordinating scriptures of the same happening in Jesus life is found in Mark Luke and John or Mark Matthew Mark and Luke's but we're just going to read from the 26th chapter of Matthew then we'll take time to exegete. So I want you to fully understand, uh, I think the name of my sermon I sent out is, Let Thy Will Be Done. And you're going to hear someone who some of you heard about and a few of you know, talk against a new theology. People talking about, I don't see why you should not ask the Lord to break your will. Mm. We're going to see we're not Jesus. People are talking about, oh, no, you should not pray for people to get well, talking about if it be thy will, because then it won't happen. Mm. We're going to see what Jesus right. had to say about let thy will. Mary's baby born in Bethlehem about this time of the year we think we, 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 we picked that out we had to figure out something Amen. so it's a good time for the church people to be off and work and proclaim we don't know when he was born but we're going to pick this date alright the ministers are going to read from the 26th chapter of Matthew Amen everyone please stand We're going to begin reading at the 36th verse. 
Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to the disciples, Sit here while I go and pray over thee. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and he began to be sorrowful and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. He went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples, and findeth them asleep, and saith unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray, that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were very heavy. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. May the Lord add a blessing to his red word. A lot of people do not realize that in the last few years, and it's always been this way, there's been a change in the theology of the modern day church. Ever since, can we give you a little history? Ever since under Emperor Constantine, the Roman Emperor of about the year of 313, about 300 years after Christ had been crucified in about 33 AD. And about the last apostle, John, lived and died about the year of 100 AD, somewhere between 96 and 100 AD. He died approximately the age of 90, uh, uh, approximately the age of 100 years. So you see, if I get to 92, I'll be in John's class yeah. when I get to 92 plus. Yeah. And uh, the, for years, the church, I mean the church, the Christians, those who wore the sign of the cross. Now in those days, Christians did have to do that there preacher thing that they do now. See, according to some people, I'm out of order. I'm both to take it and stick it over there. Not so. Not as long as these rock and roll singers are wearing diamond crosses and wooden crosses and showing them and calling them a charm. And you want the Christians to hide the cross? It still was at the cross. Uh, I, I'm still going to be proud to say it was at the cross. I don't understand. I'm, I'm maybe jumping the subject, but I don't understand that part of Christianity. After all these years, the sign of the cross was so important. 
and I'm really not off the track because this emperor, Roman emperor, name of Constantine, had was getting ready to fight a battle. I believe it was a battle of Milan, and he was having problems, and he had a vision one night. This Roman emperor that had was supposed to continue what Nero had started. Nero was the Roman emperor back in about 65 and 68 AD that cut off the head of Paul and the next day crucified the chief apostle that they called him Peter. Or he killed the chief apostles. Paul and Peter were killed in about 24 hours apiece. Paul said, I know that, that see, I'm ready. He said, I see them shortening up the blade. I've been in prison. This time I will not be set free. Say the day of my departure, the day of me getting my head cut off is near. Timothy, I'm writing this last letter this time. I'm, I, I, I'm ready. I've been ready. But this time I know there's no reprieve. The Lord let me out one time. And I traveled as far as Britain and Spain. Can I preach in here? But this time I'm back in prison again. Oh, Nero, oh, hateful crazy, psycho, neurotic Nero. The man who went with his sister and his mom and had them killed. Man, it was homosexual and a trisexual. He trisexual with anything that had a hold. He, he was so upset at the Christians that he put this lie out. They said he burned, set Rome on fire, and then sat down on fiddle and claimed the Christians did it. But here... I'm going to leave that here. Constantine, about 300 years later, happened to be the Roman emperor. And he had not been a cruel emperor against the Christians, but still the law said you only worship Zeus and Jupiter and Hermes and Venus and, you know, all them Greek and Roman gods. You know, they had... Uh, I might be confused, you know, but the Romans adopted the Greek gods. And just gave them Latin names. You know what I'm talking about. And, uh, and the, really, the political scene said that whether or not he used it as so, the emperor was supposed to be God. The emperor was supposed to be the one they worship. Now here, Constantine, a Roman emperor, Received a vision of the sign of the cross. I don't understand why we hide this in cross. Why are you preaching about the cross but it's scared to. What's wrong with preaching about? I mean, nothing beats a visual. We learn 85%, 90% now by learning through. If y'all didn't have TV and didn't have video games and didn't go to movies, y'all wouldn't learn nothing. You ain't going to turn on no radio and listen to the news. You, gonna, you ain't going to turn on no radio to look at uh, Martin. <laughs> you ain't going to turn on no radio to get the weather report. You're not, not going to turn on the radio to, you know, amen. You want to see the weatherman. You want to see what they're talking about up in Washington and in Florida. Am I right? And you want to see how, what the ladies, what they're doing on Soul Train. No train, night train. You want to see how, whether or not they really get naked on whatever. Amen. TV. Can you see it on the radio? And here he had a vision, a visual, a vision of a cross. And under it were the words, by this sign conquered. And he made a pledge. He was a man that was not a Christian, but he'd heard about the Christians. Yeah. And he didn't, they wasn't going around hiding the cross. And he said, if I'm going to make a banner, this is where the Christian flag, you know, you ever heard the Christian flag? Then I took them down now. The American flag, you heard of that one then. This, my country, tears of thee. You also heard the Christian flag, my Jesus, tears of thee, you know, uh, sweet land of, you know. You mean, heard of the Christian flag? Constantine, the Roman emperor, started this trend 
of putting a cross, he made a banner, and he went into battle with this cross on a banner, and they were shouting, by this sign conquer, and he won the battle, and he came back and made a royal decree. From now on, everybody, everybody in my cabinet, everybody on Capitol Hill, every senator, every congressman, every mayor, every governor, you know, I rule. So worship the cross on which Jesus died. And so everybody start coming to church. They forsook the temples of Zeus and Jupiter. And they stopped worshiping the Roman emperor, ever who he might be. And so the Christians were allowed to build church buildings. And they didn't have much money. Can I teach you that? They didn't have much money. They've been, they, they didn't have no, I don't know what I got to get. They didn't have no building funds because they thought that Jesus was going to come back while they were still worshiping in the graveyard. The churches were sepulchers or graves. You see, the Jews didn't dig holes and bury the dead because they felt like the animals would come and dig the bodies up. So they buried the dead in caves. They hewed out, there were plenty of caves, many of them were stone, and then they would roll a great big stone over them. Amen. So in they worship in here, the early church was in the graveyard. Amen. Now remember now, you in the graveyard, and I, they, they embalmed them in their way and wrapped them up with spices, but you ought to know, that church at that time didn't smell too good. And there were more ghosts maybe in there than the Holy Ghost, according to some people's vernacular. You know how some people are. I ain't going to talk about nobody. I ain't going to have no, I get, I feel spooky when I go to the funeral home. See, some people will not have no church in the funeral home. They got dead people away on the other side. We got to hurry up and get us a church building. Because some of y'all are scared of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but anyway, the early church, as the rich people came in, said, we'll give you some money to build. Cause, hey, we ain't coming to no hey, storefront. They hadn't got to that yet. We ain't going down in the graveyard where the dead are. We want a church building. Now when they got hurt, when they built the church building, guess what? Come by here, Lord, come by here. He said, I don't even hear that. Why? Because the pews were full, but the people in there were still full of the same devils. Many of them were baptized, not believers, but baptized devils. Many of them were... Didn't think it took all of that singing and all of that demonstration of the spirit that was going on. See, if we're going to come to your church and we're going to build you a building and if we're going to be in charge and, and see, we can teach, speak to the emperor and get a grant and a loan for you to build great cathedrals Amen. and put organs in there, rugs on the floor and padded pews. So the church went along with it. It wasn't long before no one was healed. It wasn't long before the Lord looked down and said, now y'all was worrying about having church in that stinky cave. But I ain't coming down in y'all's pretty building because there's a stench going up in my nostrils. See, y'all acting like y'all wasn't going to church in that stinky cave, but I used to come in there. Cold and damp, but I would come in there. No fluorescent lights and just a few oil lanterns, but I used to come in there because your praise and your worship was like incense in my mouth, but now I ain't come by there, it stinks. 
Now here, what I'm trying to get to see that I ain't studying about this modern day people who decided a long time ago that church ought to be like they think it ought to be. Amen. And y'all go to the church of the refrigerator. That's right. Freeze yourself to death. That's right. Amen. Here Jesus and the theology that has come out of the church is that don't press the people. See, we live in a generation now that wants instant relief. There's a battle going on about whether or not how fast you can take a pill and how fast you can get well. There's a battle going on whether or not you can tell the people we got a pill for everything. And then as they get a pill for everything, then they spend millions of dollars to advertise, my pill is faster than anybody else's pill, and my pill is more powerful than anybody else's pill. So aspirin, Tylenol, BC, goodies, and all them, you know, Tylenol, one, two, three, yeah. Motrin, and all those. There's a battle going on, and there's a battle going on about different drugs. See, we in a system now. I want to be made to feel good, and if I've been going all week long on being feel, I want to see something that make me feel good. Yeah. Oh, well, I want to feel something. I mean, I ain't talking about. They ain't talking about the soul. They want this to feel good. Yeah. They want this to be tickled. They, they want to feel something down in their loins. They want to, yeah, they want to, that's me now, like no glass pulpit. You know. yeah. They want they want to be able to feel something down in there. I mean, I want to, if I don't want to do it, you claim, if I really don't want to do it, I want to stay faithful to my wife and the husband. I really don't want, but I still would like to get the feeling, and, but they call it fantasies. I would like to daydream about sex with somebody else. So they come to church, and they want the same diet. But I came here to tell you, I came to kill the flesh. Because the wages of sin is death, and pleasing the flesh will get you killed. And some of you are dying faster than you ought to die. Some of you have diseases in your body now that you shouldn't have. Some of you are older than you ought to be and you ain't but 25. Some of you are 15 going on 45. Some of you done done enough at 25 for to last you till you, if you live to be 95. You're living too fast. The faster you live, the faster you want to go. You want fast automobile? All you want a fast sermon? Just go on out of here. I know your time is up. But what I want to get to, when it comes down to prayer, when it comes down to be well pleasing in God's sight, Jesus is the head of the church, and there's a great controversy about instant prayer. But I want you to know that you cannot, and some people are even teaching. There's some things you don't have to pray for. Just receive it in your mind. You can make up your mind all you want to. Amen. Forget about prayer. Just, just focus your mind on a, new, on a Lexus. Uh -huh. Prayer is just talking to God. Now, you just focus in your mind. You want a Lexus. You want a Rolls Royce. You want a, okay, you want a Lincoln. You want a, you want, or you want a Ford Escort, you know, 90 or 2,000. Just receive it in your mind and don't ask nobody for it. Just don't spend no energy. See what one drive itself up in your, see will a salesman come down off of the company. See will they, will you look down the street and say, there's a salesman driving up in their driveway. After a while, one going to drive up in my driveway just for, if you don't see, if you don't ask, if you, <clears throat> If you don't talk, if you don't make some arrangement, and that's all God is trying to teach you, some things he's not going to give it to you just because you stand back. You ought to know what I want. You know everything. He is not going to take that attitude, that impoliteness. You, you ain't going to walk up to God talking about, Amen. don't say nothing to him. <laughs> what do you want? You the mind reader. You are, you are omniscient, know everything. <laughs> he made us because we're the only children that he had. 
He calls us from the beginning his sons and daughters. He says, I'm the father to create the one. I'm the cause for all of you to be here. So therefore, I don't appreciate nobody coming in and reaching in, just getting in my pocket, picking up my money off of the nightstand, though he does not sleep. Amen. Just going to reach in my pocket and take my money and ain't going to say good morning. Amen. Amen. Ain't going to say thank you. Yeah. Ain't going to say daddy. Yeah. Mm. Now some people claim, okay, when I pray, I want instant satisfaction. And somebody told somebody, Oh, oh, well, uh, you can just speak one time and then uh, and, and just name it and claim it. And, and, and then if that don't work, hold your mouth right. I suppose that when they want a car, they say, I'm going to take a cheap out. They want a house that they knew them about to die. I mean, there ought to be a difference if that's going to work. It ought to be, you ought to say something different. You ought not be saying, no, 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 every time you want something. Because look like to me, if very obvious that if that is a language, if it is a spiritual language, that you're saying the same thing. So if you're going to ask for a car, don't let me hear everybody saying, nin, 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 nin. When you got a thousand different desires and wishes, don't tell me that that works when everybody's saying the same thing. And then five, four, five minutes, because, you know, you got to do this thing in an hour, you know. You ain't going to have no three-hour services, amen. But uh, what I want, let me get on to what I want, because I got a lot to say. Jesus was facing a situation. Now this lesson is only for people who run across difficulties in their Christian walk. This is only for people who run into valleys and frustrations. This is only for people who get into agony and despair. I, 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 I'm not preaching to these wonderful Christians who tell you that you should have no needs. Uh, the, the Christians should have, everybody should have more than enough. And if you read enough scriptures and come to a short enough service and sing the right song, the ones that we call praise songs, you get everything you want. There's a whole lot of faking going on. I still don't hear of thousands of people having thousands of millionaires in their congregation. I still hear two over here and Amen. one over here and Amen. none over there. Amen. Amen. Uh, it was read in your hearing, and let, let me, because I, I, I got to do this here from, if I don't do anything but this, I'm not claiming I'm going to finish. But let me read some of the translations that talked about Jesus. The 26th chapter of Matthew says, Jesus here is getting ready to go to the cross. About midnight, they're going to come and they're going to arrest him and start at midnight putting him on trial. They're not going to wait the court to open. They're going to call around and get as many as they can, not have a quorum, but everybody that they can run. You know, didn't have no telephone, no telegram, no TV, but somehow or another, they have night court, illegal, night court. And the reason, one reason that Jesus was crucified because they didn't go and wake up Gamaliel. No. And they didn't go and wake up Nicodemus. No way. No way. And they didn't go and wake up Joseph of Arimathea. The most powerful boys on the Sanhedrin court, they did not go to their house and knock on their door and say, we have an emergency court. to let Nicodemus sleep because we know what he's going to say. He slipped one night to Jesus. He'd be talking about Jesus told me we all had to be born again. What go for me, go for you. They wasn't going to wake up Joseph Arimathea, the rich man, you know, and, 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 and he the second richest man. And then uh, they wasn't, they wasn't going to wake up them bad boys, the three richest people and the most powerful and the people who were known to be, you know, the speakers of the house. They didn't bother them. They wasn't there. Say, them three boys, they ain't no, they, they going to go with the flow. They, they, they believe in that Jesus. They ain't going to let us do that. Just get the ones we know going to agree. Jesus is getting ready to face it. Now look here, he, verse 37, he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, three main boys. 
And the Bible says he began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Amen. I want you, you to establish, get in your mind that there will come a time when I don't care how good you live Amen. and how righteous you are yes. and how much you love the Lord that if Jesus came to the time yes. that he was sorrowful and very heavy, the servant no greater than his master. One says he was grieved and in great distress. Listen here. One said that Jesus was in anguish and dismay came over him. Oh, he was puzzled. Jesus, very God and very man, was getting ready to do the final chapter so that when he arose and ascended on high, we could look at him and we could not say as they say in the old, see, they say in the old time, God, you ain't down here. You, you up there in the spirit, you don't know how hard it is down here walking around in flesh. If you had a body, if you had sex drive and you had a sex organs, you would be sinning too. So God said, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to remove every excuse. They said, God, if you was down, you up in heaven and go on the street. But if you had to live down here like us and be poor, said, I'm going to send you a poor man. I'm going to send you one who don't have no place to hang his hat. There's not a homeowner. I'm going to send you someone he's going to tell you, the son of man, Mary's baby, God walking in the flesh has sent me to remove any excuse. Yeah. Now, through me, God knows exactly. Yeah. So now you have a high priest for the first time that can be touched by the feelings of your infirmity. He knows. Yeah. You ought to give some meaning. He knows just how much you can bear. Yeah. He knows yeah. what the human frame has to go through. He knows. Yeah. Jesus came and said, God, you and I are so close that yes. once we were one. Yes. And now I can talk to you. Yes. Now God, because of Jesus, knows. Yes. He knew all along. Yes. But now you know that he knows. Yes. He knew all along. Yes, he, did. he knew all along. Yes. How it feels like. Yes. Be tempted. And to be tried. Yes. And here Jesus. Jesus. Powerful Jesus. Yes. Sweet Jesus. Yes. Miracle working Jesus. Yes. Raising from the dead Jesus. Yes. Oh. Saying. My body. My human mind. My spirit. That the God in me is trapped in. I feel confused. It's in the book. I, 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 I'm in wonderment of what to do. How to do it. How can I make this next step? I've got to go to the cross. It's heavy. This body don't want to go. But I have got to go. I, I have, I, I, I've been placed in humanity. Yeah. I'm human. Yeah. I don't want to die like that. No. Yes. Yes. Preach My spirit been saying yes, yes. yes. but there's something on the outside of me that's saying no. I don't want to go. Not like that. Why? Me. Can I take back? I know that the theologian said that I said make me a body. I know they made it look pretty that I stepped down through 42 generations. But now, I know they told the people that it, what they would call Christian, I was born to die. But right now, I'm the one. And you have refused to let me step out of this body. Yes. Can I just put the body on the cross? Right. 
Can I go back up and sit beside you and just nail this body to the cross right. while I sit down and say, no, I put you all two, two together. Very God and very man, are you learning anything? This is, uh, I'm not wrestling with understanding. I'm wrestling with trying to get you to understand. One writer said he began to give way. This is Jesus now. Is the book the truth or not? He began to give way to his grief and distress of heart. One said he became sad and deeply depressed. Now, when they sing the song that says he walked this way before, he understands what you're going through. He knows. Now, you know. So if you ever get deeply depressed, sad, burdened down, beat down. Now, listen here now. I'm not talking about you done messed up and know you done messed up. Amen. Meant to mess up. Amen. But what you're upset about now because the mess up messed up worse than the, the stuff is stinking. Yes. They, didn't, they didn't give you no money like they said. Amen. You went to jail because you Amen. did what the gang said do. Amen. You got some kind of disease and, yes. and uh, he done left you, she done left you. That's right. Talking about you like a dog calling you a fish and calling you a hole. And, Calling you crazy, and, and, and then they told you you played the horses, and the cards didn't go right. And, 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 and I know you done got quiet now. Uh, let me go. A let me just stick to the text. Verse thirty eight says, "Then he said to them, My soul, my soul." Jesus speaking. Can anybody translate in this? Yet? My soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death. One writer said, my soul is ready to die with sorrow. This that I've got to face, I know I've got to go tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. They're going to nail me to a cross. But right now, my soul is so heavy that I wish I could die right now. Right now. Then I wouldn't have to go. So I've seen the video. I've got to hang there. Judas has not come to get me yet. But when he comes to get me, they're going to beat me. Tonight, they're going to beat me. They're going to curse me. They're going to spit on me. They're going to take me to Pilate. They're going to take me to Herod. They're going to strip me naked. They're going to beat me much as they feel like it. They're going to hang me on a cross. They ain't going to give me nothing to eat. They ain't going to give me no last meal. They ain't going to give me no water. They're going to bring me out. Said, I, I, I seen the heavenly video. Do I have to die like this? If you don't think that that's what he's saying, just, I, I, that's what he's saying. Let, let's, let's, let me read on a little bit more. One writer says, but he's exceedingly sorrowful. My heart is ready to break with grief. One writer said, it is crushed with anguish even to the point of death. Have you ever been somewhere I wish the Lord would just take me right now? Because what I know I'm going to have to go through, can't you just come and take me now? Now, if you hadn't been in that place, keep on living. I don't have time to name the different, but somebody ought to be able to relate. If you haven't related, remember this here. The day will come. God. You know, Job said, why? I cursed the day I was born. Why did I have to even be born? I, I, why didn't you just take me while I was in my mama's room? Why you let me live and get rich and then take everything from me? Here, yeah, Jesus, son of God. Now, the trouble about it, he's told his main boys, Peter, James, and John, uh -huh. said, I done left them other eight, nine, ten, eleven. Judah's gone now. He told the other eight to stay here. I'm taking you three with me. He said, verse 38, tarry and watch with me because I got to pray 
and get myself positioned in my mind and in my emotions. Now, he realized that it was important that whatever he had to go through, that he, if he had to go through it, that he would have the proper attitude Amen. and the proper frame of mind toward God as he went through. And he realized that in the flesh, flesh and Holy Spirit fight one another. But in order for me to get my crown, in order for me to be given a name above every name, that at my name, the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. In order that I'll be able to stick one foot on the Atlantic Ocean and straddle the earth and stick one foot in the Pacific and say, oh, power. In order for me to rise from the grave and live forevermore and sit that back down on the right hand of the Father, put back on my crown and put back on my royal robes and in order for me to get this royal reception, the Gable and Michael say, he's back. If I have to go through this, I must, you have to fix me. Do you hear me? I don't know who I'm talking to. It's probably just one or two people. Call him. He don't pick many people. Though. But I want you to know, if you're just a little bit of Christian, one way or another, you're going to have a degree of trouble, of grief, of something, the Valley of Gethsemane, and the only way you're going to get out is learn to say, like Jesus, let your will be done. As I told you, modern theology, majority of modern theology tells you, nah, you don't have to go through nothing. God didn't intend for you. But if Jesus, all right, now this is what I really want to go through. Verse 39 said, he went a little farther and fell on his face and prayed. And this is what he said. He walked on a few steps and threw himself. He didn't. Like it is in the picture. You know that pretty picture? Garden of Gethsemane. He didn't do that. He said he told them to watch for him. And he went and he threw himself on his face. And in this attitude, he continued to pray. He fell stretched out on his face. Some of us don't even want to kneel. But the main purpose is how you can pray, how to pray when you run into the valley of agony despair, dismay, greed, great distress, sad and equally even deeply distressed. Your psychiatrist says you're on the borderline of being a manic depressive. You're not only depressed, you're about the depression about to run you crazy. I, I don't know whether or not many of you know that many people, at first they didn't understand it. They don't use the word crazy no more. Because for now, every how many years Vietnam was Vietnam? Nine years. How long was Vietnam? Nine years? What? Eleven years? How many years? Uh, that thousands of young men became mentally depressed in the one state or another from seeing killings and from having to go to a war that most people got angry at. Some people, a thousand, then went to Canada. Amen. And here, and they suffer what you call deep depression. And that deep, continual depression sent many of them off their rocker. Many of them are in institutions. Sometimes it was delayed. Many of them are depressed, having to shoot and kill and to stay on a battlefield. It used to be, you know, you stayed away a year and got sent back. But people say to her month after month, year after year. They used to talk about, I won a battle. But what they thought was going to be a few months turned into years. And they're trying to relate. Now Jesus said, oh, 
my father if it be possible let this cup pass from me one translator said my father daddy let this cup if I'm going to die why do I have to drink out of that cup can't you sweeten it can't you take the bitterness out of it can't you take the ugliness out of it there's sin in that cup there's hurt in that cup people are going to laugh at me in that cup they're going to mock me they're going to make fun of me people that I have fed they're going to say they ought to kill them I knew he was crazy yeah I don't know how he did yeah I ate some of that food but I don't know how he did it they said all the church people said something wrong with him he was a magician he was of the devil yeah yeah I had a daughter she got up but I knew that was the devil I knew he was a rude worker it's in the cup I'm talking about people who serving the Lord and all of a sudden that ain't a pretty cup I would, he might have got no mud to put in his cup but just imagine he telling you you done seen them mix it they done put some dirt in there dirt off the floor went in the backyard and got some dirt mixed it in your Pepsi Cola mixed it in your coffee went to the garbage can and stirred some stuff in and said drink this here went to the toilet and put some stuff in there and said drink this here then he said Jesus he said daddy one said let me be spared this cup but this is the conclusion he said this is number one nevertheless verse 39 not as I will but as thou wilt, old English, let's get a modern translation. Shakespeare sounds pretty. Nevertheless, as thou wilt. Nevertheless, but he wasn't playing. This is written in Shakespeare in English. This is Chaucer's language. How many know about Shakespeare, Chaucer, Hamlet, Ju uh, Julius Caesar, and, and what, what them lovers are, uh, Romeo and Juliet. Say, yet I pray, not what I want, but what you want. All right, I want you, if I don't get no farther, can you think of something that you're into now? Now, I know I'm talking to somebody that's into something. That something is up on them, painful. If it's not, remember this. Don't forget this sermon. The day is going to come. I'm not going to begin to name the circumstances. And it, gonna get, it can get worse. As evil takes over this world, some of y'all crying about a disappointment of you're 14 years old and you had your first boyfriend or girlfriend that told you they got another boyfriend and girlfriend. Amen. Hey, that's going to happen some more. That's right. That's right. I mean, you ain't ready to get married. Y'all be glad that first Negro or first Negro, amen, amen, amen. They wasn't ready to be married. They wasn't... <laughs> You wasn't ready to be married. Y'all be glad somebody got you, gave you a chance to get your mind on some grades. I mean, Y'all be glad that he decided he wasn't going to go up under your skirt and get a baby by you at 14 so that him and you couldn't finish school until the child coming here under, under a curse. Dumb mama, dumb daddy. Y'all be glad that j on the way to jailbird. Better when to break your heart than to break you and your mama and your children and the whole nation. Y'all ain't in there. You ought to be able to look back at something and say, I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> but then, you know, see, y'all don't like me to get off course. I'm going to go back to the Bible. One said, yet I pray not what I want, but what you want. Not my will, but yours be done. Now, if in case I don't get to finish this here, at the end, just in this book written by 